So before we continue into the video, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, JerseyFIFA.com, the home of all of the greatest football kits. Whether that be the new latest releases or the old classic ones like this, Jersey FIFA has something for everyone and now you can check it out yourself using the link in the description down below. And also make sure to use code JERSEYFIFA for 10% off when you order. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel where today we talk about who I think Manchester United should sign this summer. My kind of ideal transfer window. Now, all year long, we've been doing a scouting for United series, looking at a load of different players and figuring out how good they are. But I realised I've never actually told you guys what I would go for this summer. Now, actually, at the time of recording, no players have been signed as of yet, although, of course, a couple of players look very, very close, and they will be included in this video to keep it realistic. Now, also to keep it realistic, we will be looking at the funds available to Manchester United. And the first thing we need to do to buy some players is first generate some money. Now, the talks are that Eric Ten Hag has £120 million available to him. And for Ten Hag to be able to spend any more money than that, players need to be sold. So here I have a list of players that I would sell this summer. First of all, we've got Harry Maguire, who I think is available for probably about £30 million. We've got either Fred or Scott McTominay. Probably I would sell McTominay, I would think, for 25 million. Dean Henderson for about 25 million. Alanga for about 12 million. Donny van der Beek for about 12 million. Brandon Williams for about 6 million. And also Tellez for 5 million. Now, if we add that to our initial 120 million, that gives us about 235 million pounds to spend this summer. So, where are we splashing the cash? Well, let's look at the team currently. This is the team currently. You can see the three positions that I would be targeting if I was Manchester United this summer. A new goalkeeper is the main priority. That signing has to happen. That is the one where it's the most important. If United don't do that, don't bother next season. Next up, a central midfielder to play as the left side of central midfielder. United really need that. And then also a striker. Those are the three positions that I would be prioritising. But on top of that, I will also be looking at a backup midfielder as well. Because currently United lack the depth if someone like Casemiro gets injured. So we will also be looking at a backup midfielder. Now, if you can stretch the budget even further, I would also look for a young centre-back to come into the team, but I think that is unlikely. So, we need to find a goalkeeper, a left-sided central midfielder, a striker, and another central midfielder. Who would we be looking at? Well, I mean, the first bit of business, it looks like it's going to happen, so we might as well start off there. Andre Onana. Now, the second that this guy signs for the club, I have got a massive video coming out looking at everything that he will bring to this side on the ball. We've already looked at how good he is in general as a goalkeeper, but in possession, he will literally transform this team. This is a transformative signing, and it is genuinely the most important piece of business that United could do this summer. The fee looks like it will be around, uh, I've got it written down here, about £40 million if United can negotiate it well, take a few million off of what Inter are asking for. For £40 million, you're getting yourself the best ball-playing goalkeeper in the world. So Onana is the player that I would look to bring into the team here. De Gea, unfortunately, I would be letting go. I mean, again, at the time of recording, he's still at the club, but by the time this is uploaded, he might be gone. But Onana would be my starting goalkeeper. And perhaps you can have someone like Tom Heaton as the backup. So that is what I would be doing from there. Now, in terms of the back four, I'm not going to change anything for now. Like I said, if there is spare money at the end, I would like to look for a centre-back. But it's not needed right now, in my opinion. So next up, we need a left-sided central midfielder. And again, I think it's important that we keep this realistic. And realistically... Manchester United are signing Mason Mount. Now again, I've got a feeling that probably by the time this is uploaded, there would have been an offer accepted. But Mason Mount coming into the club, it's a transfer which has kind of raised question marks a little bit. People questioning where he fits into the system. I think he fits into the system quite nicely. And again, that is something that I will discuss really in depth the second he signs for the club. There will be a video coming out. I've got it already recorded, edited about a week ago now. I've done all that. When that video goes up, you will see why Eric Ten Hag wanted Mason Mount. But we will also talk about it briefly towards the end of this video. Mason Mount is going to bring ball-carrying ability to this team. He's going to bring a lot of energy, and he will be that second creator. Now, the problem he's had at Chelsea, and also for England at times, is that he has been expected to be the main creator in the side. That will not be the case at Manchester United, because Bruno Fernandes is the main, uh, the main creator. So instead, Mason Mount will be expected to pick the ball up in deeper areas, carry the ball forward. Now, not in the first phase, still in the second phase, but carry the ball forward. He'll be able to rotate with the likes of Marcus Rashford in the final third. And yeah, I think that will be a very good signing. And I think it will be about £55 million with probably five in add-ons by the looks of things. I think that's probably the final offer which will be accepted. 
but I think that'll be some sort of trophy based thing. So I think Mason Mount for 55 million. So we've got 55 million on Mason Mount. We've got 40 on Onana. So that is 95 million that we have spent so far. So that means that we still have 140 million pounds to find a striker and also a backup midfielder. And I'm going to be honest, with that sort of money available to the club, generated by all those sales which we were talking about earlier, you've got to go for the best of the best. And for me, the best of the best in the world right now is Harry Kane. Now, Bayern kind of opened the bidding during last week with an offer of about £60 million, which obviously was rejected. However, I genuinely believe that if you rock up to Tottenham and offer them £90 million for a player who is getting on a bit, he's only got one year left on his contract, he's hinted at the fact that he would like to leave... I think Tottenham would be daft not to take the £90 million offer. It would allow them to invest in other areas of the team. So I think £90 million plus maybe another five in add-ons for, again, trophies and things like that would be a very good offer. And in terms of what Harry Kane's going to bring to the team, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Although I've just realised I haven't actually got his name written down, so let me just quickly add that in. Harry Kane brings pure quality to this team as the main number nine. I mean... It's not something we need to break down in depth too much, and I probably don't really need to justify this signing massively to you guys, because you guys know how good he is. He's an absolutely phenomenal player, really very, very good, and he takes this United team to the next level. So this means that I would like this to be Manchester United's starting eleven going into next season. Now again, in an ideal world where you've got a lot more money, you look for a right centre-back, but United just don't have that. So, next up we need to figure out what else do we need for this squad. Well, we need some depth. So let's look at the depth that we have currently. In terms of the striker position, this would leave us with Harry Kane and Anthony Martial. Left wing, we would have Rashford and Garnacho. Right wing, we would have Anthony and Sancho. In the fullback positions, United are well covered. Centre back's a bit of a problem, but we're not going to focus on that today. But then in the midfield, we have Fred, who can play one of these roles maybe, and also Eriksen, who can play as a midfielder as well. So we need another midfielder, because the second that Casemiro gets injured, United have no one that can play as a deeper midfielder. We need someone quite young, Premier League experienced if possible, but also someone versatile. Someone who can play as the holding midfielder, or in certain games, come into this left-sided central midfield position. And I think with the budget we've got left, we've got about £50 million left still. So, who could we bring in for this position? Lavia of Southampton. Again, recently relegated. I've spoken about Lavia a couple of times recently. I think the youngster is absurdly good for his age. The, the head that this guy has on those shoulders is well ahead of his years. This is a 30-year-old playing in a teenager's body. He is so intelligent, so calm, composed, cool, collected on the ball. It's genuinely ridiculous. And working under Eric Ten Hag for a few seasons, we could see Lavia becoming an incredible player. He has this ability to play as a six, although we're still unsure whether or not that is his best position. But there are certainly situations where he could come into the team in place of Casemiro. Maybe play alongside someone like Fred in the midfield. And, you know, move to a 4-2-3-1. It gives United flexibility in what they can do with the starting eleven. Of course, Eriksen can come into the team, Mason Mount. It gives United the ability to rotate and change systems. If United play a big team and need a bit more defensive security, you could play Lavia alongside Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes, something like that. It gives United a bit more protection and, again, that versatility to do different things and kind of change how they want to play the team. Now, in terms of the fee for Lavia, I think we're probably talking about £40 million. Apparently, Southampton want closer to 50 but I personally think you can negotiate that down closer to 40 And again, maybe you put a plus five in add-ons, which are based on trophies once again. So that means that United would have spent £225 million out of the £235 million available. And to me, it leaves United with a really good, healthy-looking squad. If we kind of look at the depth and the starting 11 positions, this leaves United with a very, very nice team, which is more than capable of competing next season. Add the fact that you've got players like Kobe Mainu who can come into the team as well, it leaves United in a really healthy place. Now, we can see that the concern would still be at right centre-back, and that is a problem. So, the question is, do you kind of sacrifice some of these other positions, the likes of Harry Kane and Lavia, so that you can get yourself a centre-back? That is the question. And if you do, how can you save a bit of money? Well, one way you can save a bit of money is not getting Harry Kane for 90 million and instead getting Hoyland for about 60 to 70 million. Instantly, you're saving yourself 20 to 30 million pounds. The other option is not to get Lavia, who's going to cost about 40 million, and instead get Andre, who is more likely to cost around 20 million pounds. That then gives you the money to sign someone like Tadebo at centre back and really add to the depth of this team because then every single position is covered with at least two players. 
but I think right now my preference would still be this. You know, what we've currently got on screen here, for me, I just like the balance of this team. The problem, of course, is that centre-back position, but I think these four signings really do take United to a different level. I'm really interested to hear what you guys think in the comments down below, and maybe I'm missing a centre-back. I can't think of any others off the top of my head who currently play for the team, but... I think this would be quite a nice team, and I think, like I've said, importantly, it seems doable to me, it does seem possible. Now, yes, it is expensive at £225 million, however, we already know that £120 million is available to the club, and we also know that with these sales here, you can raise about another £115 million, giving United £235 million to spend, which means technically United would still have £10 million available at the end of the window, and to me... That looks like very, very good business to address a lot of key areas in the team. Now, again, in terms of moving forward in the long term, you may be bringing another young striker to replace Anthony Martial. You bring in a centre-back to either replace or be an understudy to Rafael Varane. Things like that. We can see where this team would still need improving in the future. But with those four signings, those four, those four bits of business, I think you have yourself a very, very nice team. You've addressed the three key areas which need addressing, which is goalkeeper, central midfield, and striker. And also, we've brought in a bit of squad depth with Lavia as well. But like I said, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you prefer kind of my first choice options of Harry Kane and Lavia, or do you prefer the slightly cheaper and younger options of Hoyland and Andre? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, if you could subscribe with notifications on before you leave, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Like I said, the second that Onana or Mason Mount are officially unveiled by the club, I will have a video going up analysing the pair of them. Both very, very good signings if they do happen. I would like to see them happen to give United kind of progress towards heading towards this squad. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video and as always, I'll see you in the next one.